2.5 Probability Problems Using Permutations. What I want you to be able to do as part of understanding this whole unit is you should be able to describe an event that would be categorized by independent events, dependent events, mutually exclusive events, and complements. If you're able to identify the independent dependent mutual exclusive event and the complement, that's an important understanding of the definitions we've studied up until now. Example 1. Software for generating multiple choice tests randomly assigns A, B, C, or D as the correct answer. On a 10 question test, what is the probability that all 10 questions have C as the correct answer? Now, we have to understand what this question is asking. Basically, <coughs> excuse me, if I say probability of, of only getting C would be the equivalent of taking 1 and 4 to the power of 10. Why is that the case? Because each question has a 1 in 4 chance of having C as the correct answer. How many times does that happen? That happens 10 times. So 1 over 4 to the power of 10 will result in the possibility of only a having a C. So that is 1 over uh, uh, 1,048,576. Hmm, interesting. So, highly unlikely that you're all going to have C's on any quiz or test. Now, example number two. Eight people on a waiting list for advance tickets to a concert have been selected to choose their seats. What is the probability that they will have been notified in order from youngest to oldest? So what's the probability of going from youngest to oldest? Well, that is, again, we have eight places. And in order for them to be the, from the youngest to the oldest, assuming there are no twins sharing the same birthday, we have one and eight for the first spot. So eight possibilities. One and eight will be chosen in the first spot. And then one and seven for the second spot. 1 in 6 for the third spot, 1 in 5 for the fourth spot, and so 1 in 4, 1 in 3, 1 in 2, 1 in 1. So the idea is, what does this resemble? That's right, it resembles 1 over 8 factorial. 8 factorial is the poss total possible number. So we have 1 and 40,320 that definitely they were chosen from youngest to oldest. That's very low odds. Continuing on, example number 3. Four students, one from each grade, 9, 10, 11, and 12, have... <coughs> Sorry. What do they do? They... Line up to pose for a photograph. What is the probability that they will be in order of their grades? Now, so let's say it's picture day. What's the chances of them ordering and putting themselves in their order of grades? Well, we have the probability of getting in grade order is equal to 1 in 4 factorial because... Just so that you understand this, you have in four spots, so let's write this out, four spots. You have one in four chance of this picking, a, let's say, grade nine. What's remaining is three, remaining here is two, and remaining here is one. So one over four factorial turns out to you have a one in 24 chance that they lined up in the order that they appear. Okay. Moving forwards, example number four. Kylie selects five cards, and here they are. What is the probability that she selects three aces followed by two jacks? 
And the second part is, what is the probability that Kylie selects two hearts followed by three clubs? Now remember, we don't replace these cards. So what's the chances of selecting that particular order? So again, the probability of getting ace, 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 jack, jack. What's the chances? Well, you have how many aces do we have? We have four aces all to go together, and we need to choose three. And then we have how many jacks? That's right, four, and we want to choose two. And the probability means the total number of cards on the bottom, which is we have 52 cards in total, and we choose five from that total. So 52 choose five gives us the total number of cards. Well, four choose three is four factorial over one factorial times four choose two is four factorial over two factorial and 52 choose 5 is 52 factorial over 47 factorial. And what we're doing here, folks, is converting the uh, into the permutation method to factorial to get our final answer. Now, it doesn't matter which method you use. The goal is, is to get the answer. Now, sometimes you may be asked, just to warn you, you may be asked to ch convert it in different forms, so be comfortable with that. Ultimately, your final answer here is one over ten million. Sorry, one million eight hundred and twenty, eighty-two thousand nine hundred. One million eighty-two thousand nine hundred, and that's the chances of getting triple three aces and two jacks. Next, what is the probability that Kylie selects two hearts, followed by? three clubs. So, we need to think about how many hearts there are. Well, there are 13 altogether in a deck of cards and we want to choose two of them. And then the clubs times, how many clubs are there? That's right, 13 and we want to choose three of them. So, 13 choose two for the hearts, 13 choose three for the clubs, and then we divide it by the total number. And that is 52 in total. And how many are we choosing out of the deck? That's right, 5. So the result here is going to be 143 over 166,600. So you're just calculating using your calculator. All right, one more example. Example number 5. There are 30 students in a data management class kind of like our class. What is the probability that none share a birthday? And part B, what is the probability that at least two, two of them share the same birthday? So we're going to do the first one. What is the probability that none share a birthday? Well, let's see. We have 30 students in the class. Everyone agree there. There are 365 days in a year, and we want to choose two of them, sorry, 30 students in that 365. So imagine you assign a number to every day of the year, 365 days in a normal leap year, and we want to from that choose 30. So 30 unique individuals. And what we need to do is calculate the probability of different birthdays. Well, we need to divide that number by 365 to the power of 30. Why 365 to the power of 30? Imagine you have 365 days in the first one, 365 days in the second one, and so on. To have 365 over th to the power of 30. Each one has a possibility of 365. So the probability of achieving different birthdays is 0 0.2937. So we have a 29% chance of that happening in our class. Now, what happens if two of them share the same birthday? What's the probability of that happening? Well, hopefully you're thinking, okay, well, if two share the same birthday, it means that at least two share the same birthday. That means in that class, none of them cannot have all different birthdays. We already calculated the all different birthdays, so we can take one minus what we did in part A, and we get an answer of 70.6. 
3%. So literally, we could, uh, we're more likely to have somebody share the same birthday in a classroom than there are not, uh, than not sharing. Well, funny enough, for, the, for this data class, we discovered in our class that none of us share the same birthday. I think that's pretty cool. So we beat the odds. All right, folks, so why don't you try it for your own class or your own family or even uh, distant family? It's kind of neat to discover what's your chances of that happening. All right, then, anyway, uh, hopefully this helps. Have a numerical day. Take care.